Good morning all, it's Postbag, and this one says, Our sincere apologies, we're very sorry that this item has reached you in this condition. Well, I should think so. Someone's cut the bag in half. I don't know whether, perhaps they thought it was something uh, dubious. Anyway, to me, it looks like a 555 and a 4017. So yes, this is a, a little circuit board with a 4017 CMOS chip on it. Uh, the little 8-pin chip you can see is a NE555 and then there's uh, a whole row of diodes and three uh, well power transistors I suppose you could call them they're just um, well they're signal trans transistors really but they're using them to drive the LED boards of which there are three and each one has 16 LEDs those look like they're probably white because I can see phosphor uh, those are clear and those are also clear and you get this um, little ribbon cable with uh, DuPont female connectors on it how many ways is that one two three four five six seven eight nice little bag of bits that so I got this on, on eBay and uh, why did I buy it well because it was ridiculously cheap all that stuff for £1.68 and 79p postage. This came from Lakey X 101 Haha, now well, I've just noticed that the three bags have little coloured stickers on them. So these are obviously red LEDs. Uh, these are white and these are blue. Red, white and blue. What's this? Some sort of uh, patriotic thing? Well, now that's a bit of a disappointment because I've put uh, 9 volts onto the uh, power pins of this thing but only the red LEDs are flashing. Now at first I thought there might be something wrong, but I've actually had another thought. Red LEDs have a lower forward voltage than uh, blue and white. And in fact, what it looks like is that this is four columns of four LEDs. Yes, so you've got um, four LEDs in series. Now the forward voltage of the blue and white are going to be quite high. Now the listing said that this thing requires 12 volts on the input so I just don't think there are enough volts to drive four LEDs in series. So let's raise the voltage of this to 12 which is what it's meant to have. Well now I'm having a whole load of problems with this. I'm trying to connect 12 volts. This power bank can output um, up to about 13 volts. It's got a, like a a little booster circuit here. Every time I connect it there's like sparks and then the 4017 got really hot and I've just noticed that um, on the 4017, if I put my magnifying glass there, it looks like there's a solder bridge between pins 1 and 2. Now pins 1 and 2 are both outputs so I'm just going to scrape that solder bridge away and I might have to see if I've got another 4017 because that might have blown now. But uh, let me try and fix all these problems first. Well now that's interesting. I managed to blow up both the 4017 and the 555. Um, I don't think it was particularly that there were solder bridges. I think uh, the bigger problem was that I was connecting the positive and negative on this little socket here the wrong way around. Anyway, we now have... <laughs> better not let that short out. Let's switch on the power bank. We now have a working circuit. Uh, the power bank's on 13 volts. And what it does is it flashes the blue twice or possibly three times, the red twice, and the white once. What is that? What have I bought? Well, the first problem here really is that I can't see what's going on because these are flashing a bit too fast. And I've got the pot on the slowest setting. If I turn that up to the fastest setting then you can't see what's going on at all they're very very quick about 10 Hertz probably so I need to increase this capacitance now I'm assuming that this electrolytic here is the timing capacitor it's one microfarad 50 volts so let me slow that down by a factor of about I don't know four so I've just tacked on a 3.3 3 microfarad 35 volt uh, across the existing one microfarad and that certainly slowed it down and it's not quite what I thought it was it appears to be two flashes blue two flashes red and then all three come in 
So blue, blue, red, red, all three. Nope, still none the wiser. I've no idea what that sequence signifies. Now I can see on the back of the board that one of the outputs, this one here, which is pin, well if that's one, that's eight, so this is nine. Pin nine goes to three diodes, all these three diodes, and it looks like those go off to the three transistor bases. So when this output goes, well I assume it's high, it will drive all three together. So where they all come on together, it's this output pin nine that's doing that. And then there are various other combinations of outputs uh, that drive the other diodes. This is the 4017 in this block here, and these are the diodes running across here. Uh, now there are some outputs, this one here is seven and six, which are not connected. So that'll be where the LEDs are off. Uh, and then the diodes, uh, the outputs from the 4017 that are connected through to diodes are where the LEDs are on. That doesn't seem to follow a logical sequence. So let's have a look at the pinout of the 4017. And of course it doesn't follow a logical sequence. Uh, the A output is there on pin 3, B is 2, C is 4, D is 7, uh, e is up there, F, G, H, I, J. So it's all random and uh, messed up. So um, if I want to repurpose this, I'm going to have to do quite a bit of note taking to unscramble all this and get it into the sequence that I want. So I'm thinking traffic lights. Why not traffic lights? We've got 10 outputs on the 4017. Now in the UK, traffic lights go red, then red and amber together. I'm going to pretend that white is amber. Uh, then green, I'm going to pretend that blue is green. It would have to hold green for a little while. Then it goes amber on its own, and then red, and it would have to hold red for a little while. So given that we've got 10 states, let's have four red, one with the red and amber together, four green, and then amber on its own. Okay, let's make a chart. So here's my chart. Now this might not be optimum in terms of um, which outputs go to which LEDs, but uh, essentially we've got 10 states, A to J, which are the 10 output pins of the 4017. Uh, red on its own, red and amber together, white of course is amber. Four green, so green stays on for a period of time. Then it goes amber and then three reds here because of course there's one up here. And that's why I'm saying that this may not be the optimum sequence. Uh, it may be that I need to sort of bring all these down and bring all these up or something like that. But that's the uh, sequence that I'm looking for to do UK style traffic lights. Um, now how easy is this going to be to do with the diodes that we've already got connected to these outputs? Is this going to turn into a big mess? Now in my list, I've got a state here, B, which has more than one LED on. So currently here, state I, which is this pin nine, turns on all three LEDs through these three diodes. Probably what I should do is rephase these. So this is I here, so this will be H, I, J. Um, I can then light up two of the LEDs. I'll cut one of these diodes. And uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to re draw these letters in here so that I is this state with two LEDs currently being lit. So in this state which I'm now calling I, I no longer want blue aka green to come on and I've worked out that it's the third diode along here so I'm going to try and cut that without shorting everything out. Now that kind of broke the diode but anyway that's worked. I've now got my red and amber together, red and white, without the blue. Right, well we've made a start. So I've just marked uh, B, R and W for blue, red and white so that I know where the uh, bases of the transistors are. I've attached this diode here to pin 6. Pin 6, if I look at my diagram, is the H output and my H output is there which is red. So I've put that uh, phase on. Now you can see that the red there and the white and red together, red and amber together, that's now working. 
So I'll keep adding diodes and cutting out diodes from the top where they're not needed. See if I can complete the sequence without making a complete mess of it. Well now the sequence is starting to come together. You can see the uh, red, red and amber and then green. Um, I've done up to, I've done H, I, J, A, B, C. I've got three diodes on the back. I'm just going to do now D, E, F and G to complete the sequence. Well that's amazing. That's it. That's the sequence complete. It now goes uh, red, red and amber together, green. And then after the green sequence, amber on its own and back to red. It's a bit fast for a traffic light, but it is the correct sequence. Now no more diodes had to be cut out from the top, which is actually quite remarkable. And in total the number of diodes on the bottom is just five, and there's only one of them which had to sort of jump over the other ones. So it lent itself remarkably well to being repurposed as a UK traffic light sequence. That's brilliant! Now I've just bodged on uh, another capacitor in parallel with the first capacitor I put on to slow it down even further, and we now have a fairly convincing traffic light display. Green, amber, red, red and amber together, green. I like that. Now there are quite a few of these uh, 555 and 4017 modules on eBay, including this type with 10 discrete LEDs, uh, the ones with these little boards with 16 LEDs on each board. Uh, that one has surface mount components, uh, more of the same type that I've got. And a bit further down, you've got uh, this type here, which is a kit of parts so that you can build it all up yourself. That might lend itself better to repurposing. So I'll put uh, links to some of these on in the description. Now the other popular electronics project which used this combination of chips was the uh, 555 and 4017 DICE project. And you can see there that um, the, the better ones had the uh, seven LEDs, it is, seven LEDs laid out in a sort of DICE configuration. And then once again, you use diodes to uh, produce the various combinations of, in, in this sort of matrix, this diode matrix arrangement, to produce the various combinations of LEDs lighting up with the appropriate number. Now the other thing you need with um, a DICE project, and you can see it in this circuit here, this one just uses six discrete LEDs for the uh, six DICE states. You need a feedback because you don't want a seventh state, so you feedback output six back round to the reset pin, and that ensures that in ten, instead of the ten states that um, this chip normally has, in the DICE project you only end up with six states. So maybe if I buy uh, another of these modules with a 555 and a 4017 of a different type obviously I might uh, try and repurpose it as an electronic DICE. But um, for the moment I'm happy with my UK traffic light simulation. Fantastic! Cheerio!